Identify the spaces A and B, name one structure opening in each. This is a mid-sagittal section of the head showing the lateral part of the nasal cavity and you can see here the inferior nasal concha and the middle nasal concha. Below each one of them is a meatus, so there's the B is the inferior meatus, A is the middle meatus. Into the inferior meatus, the space which is beneath the concha opens the nasolacrimal duct and into the middle meatus opens multiple spaces. So we have the anterior part of the meatus opens the frontal sinus and the anterior ethmoidal air cells. They open into the anterior part of the hiatus semilunaris, which is present in the meatus, and into its posterior part of the hiatus semilunaris opens the maxillary sinus, and just above the hiatus is a prominence which is produced by the middle ethmoidal air cells. It's called the bulla ethmoidalis, and into it opens the middle ethmoidal air cells. Which cranial nerve is responsible for tongue movement? This is a protrusion of the tongue, and this protrusion is produced by the genioglossus muscle. In fact, all the muscles of the tongue are supplied by the hypoglossal nerve. This is the 12th cranial nerve. It supplies motor innervation to all muscles of the tongue except palatoglossus, which is a muscle of the palate that is supplied by the vagus nerve. But the muscle that is responsible for protrusion of the tongue, which is the genioglossus muscle, is supplied by the hypoglossal nerve. Which bone articulates with surface A? This is um, the axis or the second cervical vertebra and it is characterized by a dense or odontoid process here and the odontoid process has an articular facet located anteriorly which articulates with a similar facet located on the anterior arch of the atlas and the joint here is called the median atlanto-occipital joint and the joint is a synovial joint of the pivot variety. It allows rotation of the atlas over the axis. Name the artery that passes through foramen B. What is its origin? This is a foramen located in the transverse process of a vertebra, so it's called foramen transversarium. And foramen transversarium is a typical feature of all cervical vertebrae. It allows the passage of the vertebral vein and foramina transversaria from C6 up to C1, they allow the passage of the vertebral artery. So the artery here is the vertebral artery and the vertebral artery is a branch of the subclavian artery. At the root of the neck passes through foramen transversarium of C6 vertebra, ascends through other foramina transversaria and then enters the cranial cavity through the foramen magnum and provides the second source of blood supply of the brain together with the internal carotid artery. Name the nerve that carries postganglionic fibers to A. A is the parotid gland and the parotid gland is supplied by the auriculotemporal nerve. The auriculotemporal nerve is a branch of the mandibular division of the trigeminal nerve. It carries sensory fibers that originate from the mandibular division of the trigeminal nerve together with postganglionic secretomotor fibers that originate from the otic ganglia, which is located in close proximity of the mandibular nerve just below the foramen ovale. The otic ganglion is the source of postganglionic fibers that accompany the auriculotemporal nerve to be delivered to the gland. The origin of preganglionic fibers is from the glossopharyngeal nerve. Name the nerve that provides sensory cutaneous fibers over the circumscribed area B. Area B overlies the angle of the mandible and the parotid gland. And this is the only part of the face that is supplied by a branch from the cervical plexus the branch that ascends upwards from here, from behind sternocleidomastoid muscle. This is the area that is supplied by the great auricular nerve. Identify the arteries A and B. These are the terminal branches of the external carotid artery. A is the superficial temporal artery and B is the maxillary artery. A continues on the surface of the scalp. 
in front of the tragus of the ear. B is deep. It passes medial to the neck of the mandible, which has been removed from this dissection. The neck of the mandible and the entire ramus and angle of the mandible are removed. And so we can see the infratemporal fossa. So the artery B is the maxillary artery. The maxillary artery is the artery that provides the middle meningeal artery. Middle meningeal artery that passes through foramen spinosum and reaches the middle cranial fossa. It is the main artery that supplies the meninges. Identify the muscles A, B, and C. What is the nerve supply of each? A is temporalis muscle, and this is a muscle of mastication. Like other muscles of mastication, it is supplied by the mandibular division of the trigeminal nerve. The other muscles of mastication include medial pterygoid, lateral pterygoid, and the masseter muscle, which is reflected here. B is frontalis, or the frontalis portion of occipital frontalis muscle. It is one of the muscles of facial expression, and like all other muscles of facial expression, is supplied by the facial nerve, and to be specific, by the temporal branches of the facial nerve. C is the sternocleidomastoid muscle, and this muscle is supplied by the accessory nerve, the spinal root of the accessory nerve, together with trapezius muscle. 3D reconstruction of CT and geography showing aneurysm of the artery which is resected in B. Which artery is being under surgical resection of aneurysm? You can see here the artery is the terminal branch of the external carotid. Here's the external carotid. It gives the maxillary artery that goes deep to the neck of the mandible and to the infratemporal fossa and the second terminal branch is the superficial temporal artery that crosses the zygomatic arch in front of the tragus of the ear where it can be palpated the area of aneurysm is more superior to the tragus and so you can see it here and this is the superficial temporal artery identify the foramen circumscribed by the interrupted line what is its clinical significance? This is a view of the mastoid process from behind, and the foramen is called the mastoid emissary foramen. It transmits emissary vein that communicates between the posterior auricular vein and the transverse venous sinus. Like any other emissary veins, they communicate between veins outside the skull and the veins inside the cranial cavity, and they provide a potential route for spread of infection from the scalp to the cranial cavity. Identify the bone indicated by the arrow. What is its clinical significance? This is a sutural bone or wormian bone, and these are accessory bones, which are commonly located in the lambdoid suture as the situation in here, but they can be seen uh, sometimes along other borders of the parietal bone. But here, this is the posterior border where it articulates with the occipital bone at the lambdoid suture. The clinical significance here is that the number of sutural bones varies greatly from person to person and the presence of such variable bones might lead to confusion in reading radiographs in case of head injuries because they might be mistaken for fractures. So it's better to know about their presence and their variation. Which section shows facial nerve, maxillary sinus, nasopharynx, mandibular ramus, lens, and mandibular head? These are horizontal sections of the head. Let's deal with the facial nerve. The facial nerve leaves the posterior cranial fossa by passing through the petrous temporal bone. Here, this is the petrous temporal bone, and this, this is the posterior cranial fossa, where you can see the cerebellum here and part of the brainstem. And here's the internal auditory meatus, where the facial nerve, together with the vestibulocochlear nerve, they pass into the bone. So section B shows the facial nerve. It is not shown in other sections. Maxillary sinus is located in the maxillary bone. So we need to find the lowest of these sections, or a lower section, a section that does not contain brain, that contains the bones of the face below the orbit. And this is... The section here that shows the maxillary bone and the maxillary sinus on the lateral side of the nose. The nasopharynx 
is the part of the pharynx that is located behind the nose. And so if we look here, we'll find the nose in all of the sections. Here, this is a region behind the nose, but this is not the pharynx. This is part of the body of the sphenoid bone containing the sphenoid air cells. You can see the septum in between. But if you look at this section, this is the section that shows the nasopharynx behind the nose. And you can see here the opening of the auditory tube opening into the nasopharynx. And this is the roof of the nasopharynx, which is formed by the lower part of the body of the sphenoid bone that is shown here. Mandibular ramus, this is the vertical part of the mandible. And you can see it clearly here. This is the ramus of the mandible on this side. Here's the other ramus of the mandible. And you can see the masseter muscle attached to the outer aspect, lateral aspect of the ramus. And medially, it is the medial pterygoid. And also here you can see the lateral pterygoid muscle on its way to the neck of the mandible. This section shows the lateral pterygoid here and shows the head of the mandible or the condyle of the mandible including the head the lateral pterygoid is attached to the neck and here's the head of the mandible so the mandibular head is shown in this section the lens of the eye is shown here here we can see the eyeball but the lens is not shown because the section is either above or below the level of the lens but here you can see the lens in both eyeballs. The other sections do not show the eyeballs.